اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا ومن شر ما يهده الله ومن شر ما محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم اما بعد we begin by saying bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim in the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful God truly and verily all praise is due to Allah we praise him and seek only his helpless forgiveness and we also seek refuge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from evil of our nafs which is our heart and desires for verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the nafs your heart and desires it is inclined to do so it is inclined to do evil except by the rahmah except by the mercy of Allah we also see refuge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the sayyati amarina those deeds and those actions that are not sanctioned by Allah in the Quran and those deeds and those actions that are not sanctioned by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the sunnah those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills to be guided to Islam which is total submission to the will and commandment of Allah nobody can lead them astray and those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills to be misguided of the sirat al mustaqim no one can guide we bear witness that there is no god but Allah the one god who has no partners and we bear witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a slave and his messenger Abu Bakr the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that verily the best speech the best hadith is the speech of Allah written in the Quran and the best guidance is the guidance of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the sunnah and the worst of all matters are those things that are innovated by the people for all innovation leads to bid'ah all bid'ah leads to dalala which is going off the sirat the mustaqim and all the dala is in the nor which is the fire so we see verse of Allah Subhanahu from that nor oh Allah give us good in this life hasana oh Allah give us good in the next life hasana wa qina adaba nor and oh Allah save us from the punishment of the fire allah amin alhamdulillah rabbil alamin all praise is due to Allah who has given us another day of life another day to say la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, that Allah blesses to be among the Muslim men and blesses to be of those who follow the way of the Salaf of Salihim, the first three generations. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Again, continuing our ta'aleem with the verse to the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, whom Allah said that this is the best story in the Quran. The best story in the Quran is the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, which is the story of Joseph. There's many lessons in it, there's much wisdom in it, right? And there's much that we can learn from the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. We learned last week with the boss to Yusuf alayhi salam being thrown into prison. We learned that he was thrown into prison because of the women of the town. They tried to seduce Yusuf alayhi salam because of his handsomeness. So now we're going to continue from the subject matter of Yusuf alayhi salam being thrown into the prison. Now remember, Yusuf alayhi salam said, prison is more dearer to me than that which they called me to. Prison is more dearer to me than that which they called me to. And what was it that they was calling them to? They were calling them to Jahaliyyah. They were calling them to this dunya. They was calling them to Mukkar and Fasha. So we see refuge in Allah put on for those things, just like Yusuf alayhi salam sought refuge in Allah put on for those things. But Yusuf alayhi salam said, prison is more dearer to me than that which they called me to. So now we're in a story, we're in a subject matter where Yusuf alayhi salam is in prison. So we're starting from verse 36 of the Quran. Verse 36 of the Quran. Allah states, "Aunti bilai min shaitan rajim." And they entered with him two young men in the prison. So Allah Taala said that when Yusuf alayhi salam went to prison, there was two young men that entered into the prison with him, and they entered with him Yusuf alayhi salam, two young men in the prison. One of them said. Verily, I saw myself in a dream pressing wine. And the other one said, Verily, I saw myself in a dream carrying bread on my head, and the birds were eating from it. So there was two people that were in prison with Yusuf alayhi salam. They both had dreams, and they came to Yusuf alayhi salam to interpret these dreams. They said, Inform us as to the meaning as the interpretation of these dreams, verily we see that you are the most seen. So they asked Yusuf alayhi salam, can you interpret these dreams for us? Because we see that you're of the most seen. And the most seen 
are those who have the highest level of faith. Remember when we learned from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu there's three levels of faith. You have Islam, Iman, and Islam. And Islam is the highest of faith. So Allah Ta'ala said that they said to Yusuf and Islam, we see that you're of the Muslimin. We see that you're the highest of faith. So can you please tell us the interpretation of these dreams? We're told in the top seer that these two men, they worked for the king. One of them was a distiller for the king, one of them that dealt with the, the water, the wine of the king, and that the other person was one who was a baker, one that cooked for the king. Okay? Alhamdulillah. So they asked Yusuf alayhi salam, can you tell us the interpretation of these dreams? One of them said, I see myself with, you know, bread on top of my head, and there was birds that were eating from the top of my head. They were eating this bread from the top of my head. And then the other person said, I had a dream that I was pressing one. So Yusuf alayhi salam said, he said, no food will come to you as a provision, but I will tell you its interpretation before it comes. This is of that which Allah subhanahu has taught me. Verily I have abandoned, I have left the ways of those who do not believe in Allah and they disbelieve in the Akira. So Yusuf Allah said, with regards to your dreams, before you're even given your food, before your food comes to you, before you're able to eat anything, I'm gonna give you the interpretation of these dreams, inshallah. Then he tells them, this is a part of what my Lord has taught me. So we're told that Allah taught Yusuf the interpretation of dreams. Nobody can give their interpretation of dreams. Nobody can say well, what this dream means unless you've been qualified or you've been read up, you know what I'm saying, or you read up on the hadith with regards to the dreams. But with regards to telling the interpretation of dreams, Yusuf was one of those who were blessed by Allah to know the interpretation of the dreams because he was a prophet. He wasn't just a regular man, he was a prophet. And thus he said, this is something from which Allah subhanahu wa had taught me. Not something that I made up myself, not something that I think, but this is something that Allah subhanahu wa has taught me. Then he says, Verily I have abandoned and left the ways of those who disbelieve in Allah and those who disbelieve in the Akira. He said, I believe in Allah subhanahu wa and I believe in the Akira. And from this, this is why Allah subhanahu wa has blessed me. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Verse 38. Allah states, Yusuf alayhi salam, he continues. He says, I have followed the ways of my father, Ibrahim alayhi salam. I have followed the ways of Ishaq. I have followed the ways of Yaqub, which is Jacob. And never could we ascertain or associate partners with Allah. This is from the grace of Allah upon us and upon mankind. But most of mankind are ungrateful. Allah Ta'ala said that most of mankind are ungrateful. So Yusuf alayhi salam, while he's in prison, he's telling them that he's been blessed with the interpretation of dreams. He's telling them that this is something that he learned and was taught by Allah Ta'ala. He's telling them that he doesn't, uh, he's not of those who disbelieve in the Akira. So therefore he's telling them that he believes in the hereafter. He also tells them that I follow the way of my father Ibrahim alayhi salam. I follow the way of Yishak, meaning Isaac, Abraham. And I follow the way of Yaqub alayhi salam. Right? So again, going back to when we were told for the cause to all of Bani Yaqub, or all of Bani Israel, they were all Muslim. They all believed in one God, and they all submitted to their reality of La ilaha illallah. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. So we're told that Yusuf alayhi salam, while he was in prison, even though he was in there for doing something or he was accused of something that he didn't do and yet he was going through his trials and tribulations of being in jail one of the things that he did and one of the things that he did not neglect was advocating and preaching Tawheed right he told him about Tawheed he said I don't, I'm not one of those who commit shirk I'm not one of those who disbelieve in Allah I'm not one of those who disbelieve in the Akira I have left the ways of those who believe in this. But I follow the way of my fathers, Ibrahim alayhi salam, 
I follow the way of Abraham. And remember, uh, Abraham, Allah says, Hanifa Muslima. Abraham was neither a Jew or a Christian. Remember the word Jew came from the word Judah. The word Christian came from Jesus. Jesus wasn't even alive yet. So what was the religion of Abraham? What was the religion of Isaac? So Yusuf alayhi salam, he's affirming that he follows the way of Ibrahim alayhi salam, which is Abraham. He follows the way of Isaac, which is Isaac, which is Ishaq. And he follows the way of Yaqub alayhi salam, which is Bani Israel. And he said that he believes in the one God. He says, O oh, companions of the prison, are many different lords, are many different gods better, or is Allah the one, the irresistible? So he's giving down one to the people in prison. He said, reflect and think, is it better for you to worship more than one God? Is it better for you to have more than one Lord, or is it better to just worship one God? Right? Say, he Allah is one. Just like it says in the Old Testament, the first commandment. Hear, O Israel, thy Lord, thy God is one. Thou shalt not have any other gods before me, for I'm a jealous God. So Yusuf alayhi salam, he's giving dawah. He's calling people to the deen. Even though he's going through trials and tribulations. Right? Even though he's been slandered. Even though he's been accused of something that he didn't do. This didn't stop him for fulfilling his obligation of giving dawah and calling people to the deen. Remember, he was a prophet. So thus, this was his duty. So he said, isn't it better that you worship the one God, the irresistible God? You do not worship other besides him, except that you have named them with names that you have come, came up with. You do not worship others besides him, except that you have made up names for them. You and your father, in which Allah spoke Allah sent no authority to do this. Verily, the judgment is with Allah. The hukum is with Allah. He has commanded that you do not worship except him. This is the correct deen. But yet, most of mankind will not believe, even though they eagerly desire it. So Yusuf al Salam said, Isn't it better for you to worship one God? Yet you worship other than Allah, and you give these gods names that you and your fathers have made up. Right? People call God different names. They make up partners with Allah. He said, but nobody gave you the authority to do this. If you go into the scriptures of old again, like we just quoted the Old Testament. We just quoted the Torah. And we can quote, we can quote the statements of Jesus. Right? Whenever they came to Jesus, they asked him questions. When they came to Jesus and they asked Jesus questions, what did he do? He quoted the Old Testament. He quoted the book of Deuteronomy. He quoted the book of Exodus. And it also says in the scriptures of old in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 through 21, Jesus said, do not think that I came to change the law. I didn't come to change the law. I didn't come to switch it up. I came to confirm the law. And if anybody changes the jot, a jittle, a letter of the law that will be least in the kingdom of God. But those who keep the commandments of the law, the Old Testament, they will be great in the kingdom of God. So Yusuf alayhi salam, he's giving dawah to them. He said, you name these gods with different names. Nobody gave you the authority to do this. But Allah, Allah has commanded you to worship the one God. And this is the correct way. He said, this is the deen of qayyumah. To worship one God, he said, this is the correct deen. This is the straight deen. This is what it is that you're supposed to do. He said, you do not worship others besides Allah, and you have named them certain names, you and your fathers, in which Allah subhanahu wa has said no authority. Verily, the judgment is with Allah. Meaning all the hukum is with Allah. All the commandments is with Allah. All the laws are with Allah. We have verses in the Quran which verify this reality. If we go to Surah Al-Ma'idah, and again we say the hukum is with Allah, the judgment is with Allah. So we go to chapter 5 in the Quran, chapter 5, verse 44 through 47. Surah Al-Ma'idah, chapter 5, verse 44 through 47. Allah Ta'ala said that anybody who judges by other than what Allah Ta'ala has revealed, they are the kafirin, the dalimin, and the fasikin. 
Anybody who judges by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed, they are the kafirin, meaning the disbelievers, they're the valideen, meaning the wrongdoers, and they're false again. They are the evil ones or the corrupt ones. The hukum is with Allah. So therefore, when we judge, when we make statements, when we follow certain things, it must be what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded to do. So therefore, he said, the hukum, it is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the correct deen. And he said, but most of mankind, they will not believe correctly. Most of mankind will be led astray, although they eagerly wish to be of those who believe. Again, proving that guidance is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Guidance isn't because you're born with guidance. Guidance isn't because it's something that you're given as a right. Guidance is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, most of mankind will not believe although they eagerly wish for it. Even with the boss to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah told the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I see that it grieves you, that these people, they don't believe in you. He said, but your job is to convey the message. But guidance is from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Your job is to convey the message. Just like with Yusuf and Islam, his job is to convey the message, right? So again, the emphasis of today's ta'aleem is with the boss to Yusuf and Islam being in jail. And while he was in jail, yes, he was given interpretation of dreams, but also while he was in jail, what was his, what was his ultimate objective? What was his ultimate commandment? First and foremost, to give da'wah and call people to Tawheed. He reminded them about Tawheed. It doesn't matter whatever situation, whatever predicament that you're in, you still must give da'wah. You may be at your weakest point. You may be at your lowest point. But that doesn't stop you from giving doubt. That doesn't stop you from proclaiming Tawheed. Many great men, they did their best work while they were locked up. Many great men did their best work. Right? They put together their best works while they were locked up. Ibn Taymiyyah. Right? Ibn Ahmed. Right? Most of these people, they did their best work. Imam Malik, Imam Ahmed, Ibn Taymiyyah, they did their best work while they were locked up. So thus, when you're locked up, it doesn't mean that you stop your dawah. It doesn't mean that you stop your advocation of this deen. It means that you increase in your advocation of this deen. So what did Yusuf al salam do when he was in jail? Yusuf al salam first and foremost, he told him, yeah, I'm going to give you the interpretation of your dreams. I'm going to tell you what it is that you want. But first and foremost, I'm going to give you some da'wah. I'm going to tell you what it is that I don't worship. I don't worship other gods other than Allah. I don't make any partners with Allah. I turn away from shirk. I don't associate partners with Allah. What do I follow? Yusuf alayhi salam said, I follow the way of my fathers, Ibrahim alayhi salam. I follow the middle of Ibrahim alayhi salam. I follow the way of Abraham. I follow the way of Ishaq. I follow the way of Isaac. I follow the way of Yaqub. I follow the way of Jacob. And remember, we learned in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala said, "And were you not present when Yaqub, when Jacob, when he was on his deathbed, and he called all of his sons, and he asked them what it is that you will worship after me? That's, they said we will worship your Lord, the Lord of your fathers, of Ibrahim." Ismael, Ishaq, the one God, and to him will be of the Muslimin. So thus, Yusuf alayhi salam, he already had Akidah inside of him. He already had Tawheed inside of him. He already understood La ilaha illallah. We bear witness that there is no God but Allah. So thus, while he was locked up, and thus while he was locked up in prison, he advocated Tawheed. Okay? So what the love of the this is the emphasis of today. This is the wisdom today. This is the knowledge today. While Yusuf al Salam was locked up in prison. And we're going to continue with the story next week. Like we talked about, we're not going to move fast with this story. It's not a story that we're going to, you know, race through it, 50 yard dash it. We're going to go through it slowly so that inshallah we can get the wisdom out of it. We can get the knowledge out of it. Right? And we can try to inculcate it into our life. Okay? So Yusuf al-Islam, he was put in prison. While he was in prison, 
there were people in the prison that recognized him to be of the good doers. How did they recognize? They said, we see you to be of the Muslimin. We see that you are those who are good. How was that? Because Yusuf and Islam, he was showing by his example, even though he was locked up, even though that he was at a low point, even though he had been betrayed, right? He still conducted himself in the best of manners. He conducted himself like a Muslim to the point that they seen that he was doing good. We see that you are the Muslim. So therefore, can you give us an interpretation of dreams? He said, yeah, I'm gonna give you the interpretation of these dreams. Matter of fact, I'm gonna give them to you before you even get your dinner, right? Because this is something that Allah has taught me. He taught me the interpretation of dreams. And again, one thing that we must understand with regards to dreams, but Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said that anyone who lies about a dream, they'll be in a hellfire. So don't lie about something that you didn't see. Oh, I dreamed about this. Oh, I dreamed about that. And it's a lie. Man, I hope to be lying with the Shaitan Rajeem. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that those who lie about dreams, they'll be in a hellfire. Also with the boss to your dream, if you have a good dream, tell it to somebody that you love. You have a bad dream, you don't tell it to nobody. Right? You say, I will be like the Shaitan Rajeem. You see, Prophet Allah will not come Shaitan, they're cursed. You switch sides and you blow three times to the left. Okay? This is how we follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, with the bars to the dream. It's just another Nasiha. So Yusuf alayhi salam said, Yes, I'm going to give you the interpretation of these dreams because this is something that Allah subhanahu wa has taught me. This is a grace that He bestowed upon me, my fathers, and upon mankind. But most of mankind, they will not believe. Matter of fact, isn't it better that you worship one God instead of multiple gods? So now he's giving them da'wah. I'm going to give you what it is that you asked for because you asked me. But in the meantime, in between time, I'm still going to give you this da'wah. Isn't it better for you to worship one God instead of many lords? That which you call on other than the lost of the law, these many gods, these are the things that your fathers and you have made up. You made up these names. But yet, Allah subhanahu wa did not give you any sultan. He didn't give you no authority to do this. I, I follow the way of my father Abraham alayhi salam. I follow the way of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Again, going back to the ayah. We follow the military Ibrahim Hanifa. We follow the way of Ibrahim alayhi salam who was a Muslim. We follow the way of Abraham who was a Muslim. One who submitted to the will and commandment of Allah. Right? Allah says he was not a Jew, right? Because the word Jew came from the word Judah. Right? Judah was one of the Sam Judah was one of the sons of Israel. Judah was one of the sons of Jacob. So therefore, Ibrahim alayhi salam, who came way before Judah, he couldn't have been a Jew. And he said he wasn't a Christian, right? Because the word Christian didn't come until Christ, which came many thousands of years later. So what was the religion of Abraham? Allah Allah said that he was a Hanifa Muslim. He was a polythe he was a monotheist, right? He wasn't a polytheist. He was a monotheist, and he was one that submitted to the will of command. So Yusuf alayhi salam said, I follow the way of my father Abraham, right? The Hanifa. I follow my the way of my father is Hop, which was Isaac, and I follow the way of my father, Yaakub, which was Jacob, right? The one God, the irresistible God. But most of mankind will not believe, although they eagerly wish to do so. Most of mankind will not believe, although they eagerly wish to do so. Again, proving that guidance is from Allah. It doesn't matter how much you talk. It doesn't matter how much you show people evidence. If Allah doesn't want to guide somebody, He won't guide somebody. Allah says, Yahdi may a share when you did the may a share. He guides who He pleases, and He leads astray whom He pleases. So thus, we must understand that if Allah guides somebody, it's by the nikmah of Allah. It's by the rahmah of Allah. It's by the mercy of Allah. It's by the favor of Allah. Okay? So thus, when Allah guides us to Islam, we be of the shakirin, we be of those that are grateful. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Okay? So that's the wisdom of these ayats.
Again, we're going to stop here. But with regards to what is it that we learn? We learn that even though when you're at the lowest of your low, even though you've been betrayed, even though you might have been lied on, even though you might get thrown in prison, you might get thrown in jail, even though you might have been slandered, that don't stop you from what it is that you're supposed to do. That doesn't stop you from advocating the truth. Allah says the best of those who say, or they call to the deed, وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ and they say they're of the Muslim. And this is what Yusuf Islam did. He called to the deen, he warned against shirk, and he talked about Tawheed, Alhamdulillah. So may we get some wisdom out of this and understand that whatever predicament, whatever situation that we're in, we never give up the application of La ilaha Muhammad Rasulullah. We never give up the reality of being good examples. Because they said to Yusuf Islam, we see that you are of the Muslim. Right? We see Nara. We see that you're of the Muslimi. How did they see that he was of the righteous? They see it because he was working righteous deeds. Allah said, The best of the Son of Allah are those who call to the deen. Well, I'm in a sorry heart, and they work righteous deeds. Right? You work righteous deeds so the people can see what it is that you're doing. Allah said, E'alamu. Right? E'amalu. Right? And work righteous deeds. So that the people can see you, Allah can see you, the Rasul can see you, and the Mu'minin can see you. That's the best type of dawah. He said, the best of the Son of Allah, those who call to Allah, they work righteous deeds, and they tell the people they're of the Muslimin. This is what Yusuf salam did. He called him to the deed, he worked righteous deeds, and he told him that he was a Muslim. He told him that he followed the way of Ibrahim, he told him he followed the way of Ishaq. He totally followed the way of Yaqub. Alhamdulillah. So may Allah bless us to follow the way of Yusuf alayhi salam. Whatever situation, whatever predicament, whatever type of circumstance, may we be of those who still call to the deen. May we still be of those who work righteous deeds. And may we be of those who are good examples, inshallah. Ameen. Any questions? Yeah. So you guys understand, right? Regardless of the situation, regardless, regardless of any type of a circumstance you still get application of this deed, inshallah. Question? I have a question. Okay, okay inshallah, we'll close out, inshallah. Like I said, we're not going to stay long with the situation. We're not going to stay long today. We're only going to go through a couple of ayats, trying to get the wisdom of these ayats. And the emphasis of the ayats today is advocating Tawheed, proclaiming Tawheed, even in prison, even in a locked up situation, even when you're going through trials and tribulations. Even when you're going through slander, persecution, censorship, keep pushing this dean. Not only keep pushing this dean, but be a good example of this dean, right? And never fear or fret tell the people that you're the Muslim, inshallah. That's the wisdom of the, of the Ta'ali today, inshallah. May we get benefit from it today, inshallah. May we understand today, inshallah. May Allah forgive us of our sins, inshallah. And may we continue to do better, inshallah. Ameen. Awadu billahi wa shaitan wa بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والأصر إن الإنسان لا في قصر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات ونوصل الحق ونوصل الصبر سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك وشرب الله لا أنت وأستغفرك تبليك آمين ونحمد الله رب العالمين